Hello. 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 May I please have some quiet? Class? Class, if you don't mind. Just a little quiet. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jody Whiteley, and I will be your substitute teacher for today. Uh, your regular teacher couldn't make it, so I'm going to be standing in. Today we will be talking about ASMR as it relates to other altered states of consciousness. Now there is um, agreement out there whether or not ASMR is an altered state of consciousness, but that seems to be the major assumption right now. Uh, we will be discussing, just a minute, let me get my books. Um, I hope you brought your textbooks today, because we'll be needing them. And I hope you brought lots of pens and paper, because I'll be needing you to take notes. Now, where's my pen? We will be speaking about how ASMR relates to altered states of consciousness. The alternative states of consciousness that we will be contrasting and comparing will be ecstasy, euphoria, hypnosis, and meditation. And you're going to follow along in your textbooks today. So let's begin with what is ASMR. ASMR is Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. And that is um, an intense tingling and joy that is felt uh, in connection with certain stimulus. Um, this can be visual, uh, watching tasks, repetitive tasks, and uh, it can be auditory, certain sounds, clicks, sounds of paper, sounds of writing. These can all trigger an ASMR response. Uh, like I said, um, repetitive tasks, uh, certain things like soft touch, um, haircuts, playing with hair, soft voices, whispers, clicks, scraping sounds. The triggers are varied. And um, let's have a look. Let's start with our first. There is no entry in the textbook for... ASMR because so little is known about it, but I am going to be asking for a 1500 word report describing your ASMR and how it relates, compares, or contrasts to these four altered states of consciousness. I would like it double spaced. Spelling and grammar does not count. Okay, now here in the textbook I would like you to turn to page 157, and we will Okay, and here we are at our first altered state of consciousness, ecstasy. What is ecstasy? Well, ecstasy can be defined as total involvement of the subject with an object of his or her awareness. So that's where your focus is completely, completely taken up 
with an object. Um, it's, uh, we are usually aware of other things around us, um, but uh, when we're in a state of ecstasy, we are only focused on that one thing and, and not able to really see or hear anything else that's going on around us other than the one object. We are normally aware of other things. Now this can happen concentrating on a physical task. Please make sure you're taking notes about this because most of this information I'm giving you is not in the textbooks. So please take notes about what I'm saying as long as as well as following along in your textbook. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so you're concentrating on a physical task to the exclusion of all else. You cease to be aware of any intellectual thoughts when you're in a state of ecstasy. You could also, um, some people do compare it to euphoria. We'll speak about that in a moment. Uh, but in an ecstatic state, um, you're, you're just completely enthralled, completely engrossed, uh, completely unaware of anything else that's happening but the, the object of your ecstasy. Um, now, the next state I would like to talk about is euphoria. Now, euphoria and ecstasy, you see, are often um, compared, but you see, they, they are slightly different. Um, Euphoria is, uh, here, let me write this down. Euphoria. Um, that is a mental and emotional con condition. Feelings of happiness, ecstasy, uh, and joy. It's, um, exaggerated physical and psychological state of happiness. So you're in a, um, an exaggerated, exaggerated feeling of happiness. Um, it can be achieved through drugs, but it's, it's not normal for, for sober people. Um, except, there's exceptions for this, you can reach a non-drug induced state of ecstasy um, through uh, sexual involvement, um, maybe uh, if through love, uh, just to love someone. Uh, athletes will often feel a brief uh, surge of, ex of um, euphoria. Often will feel a, a euphoric reaction after winning um, an athletic event. And uh, ecstasy, non-drug-induced non ecstasy, can also be attained through meditation um, and some spiritual uh, religious rituals also lead to um, a euphoric state. So ecstasy seems to focus more on an object or an activity or something to the exclusion of all else. And you might want to write how that state of consciousness relates to your ASMR. If you do not have ASMR, and I know a couple of you here do not have ASMR, um, if, if that is the case, Please, you'll have to buddy up with a friend, family member, or classmate who does have ASMR and, and borrow their experience. Uh, and if you are here and you do not have ASMR, I'd just like to thank you for showing up and taking an interest in this, this new and wonderful phenomenon that we're not sure how common it is to how many people yet but it certainly is something new that we should study and pay attention to. And your euphoria, how does that relate to your ASMR? Um, uh, ecstasy, total focus, euphoria, a mental and emotional condition of exaggerated happiness. And now we have 
hypnosis. Hypnosis. Hypnosis is a trance-like state. Um, in this trance-like state, you become extremely relaxed. You are suggestible, open to suggestions. And you also, they say, have an increased imagination in, in this state. So again, in, in your essay, make note of how, how a hypnotic state compares and contrasts to um, an episode of ASMR. Now with hypnosis, there is um, two theories about it. One is state theory, and um, Tom, Thomas, yes, yes, if you could, if, if we could just keep it down a little bit, that would make it a lot easier for me. Thank you very much. I know it's difficult. It's a small room. The, the acoustics aren't that good, and there's a lot of people in it. But we have so much information that we have to pack into such a small class, because like I said, I'll be leaving early today. So if I could just have your undivided attention, I know asking for ecstasy would be a little much. Let's get back to hypnosis here. S there's two theories about what hypnosis is, and state theory states... Here, I guess this. Theory. State theory states that it is an emotion, um, that it is a mental state. Uh, Non-state theory non-state non theory uh, claims that the hypnotic trance is um, an imaginative role enactment. So it's almost like imaginative role playing where the person's leading you on to it and, and you're going along with the role play. Um, I'm not sure which. I'll let you decide in, in your report. Um, and please feel free to leave comments about this. Uh, I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. Um, so, also we have uh, a hypnotic state is induced by an instructor or, or what some people might call a, might call a hypnotist. Um, this person uh, gives a series of instructions to relax the person and suggestions and um, or a hypnotic trance-like state can also be uh, self-induced. So either way, uh, I, you go into, into a trance, you become very relaxed, very open to suggestions, and uh, that's, that's what hypnosis is about. So again, compare and contrast with your or your friend and family members, ASMR, and let me know um, where you see yourself and your e ASMR in this and where you think there definitely is a lot of differences. And then finally, we have the fourth one, which is meditation. I'll write this down. Oh, and in your textbook, you're going to have to flip forward here for meditation. It's in a different section. So if you could just turn to page 339. 339, you'll see it on the right. And we have um, a little thing on meditation here. All of these, these sections, the previous one and this one, both of them, um, you're going to have to read them and include material from them refer to them in your paper.
Now, meditation is where you train your mind to self-induce a mode of consciousness. So it's a, it's a different level of consciousness that you train your mind to be able to self-induce. Um, and you do this for benefits. The benefits um, are, have been touted for, for quite some time and in studies have been shown to be true that it increases your creativity, relaxation, um, your overall state of mental health, happiness, well-being. As you can tell, um, yes, I, I am a meditator. I meditate every day, and I really do think it helps. I once suffered from depression and anxiety. These things are, are no longer really a, a very big problem for me anymore. So I'm a big fan of meditating. Um, it's inwardly oriented. It's inwardly oriented. Um, done by yourself. You sit alone and you focus inward on on the spirit within yourself. Um, it's it's a journey within. Uh, just my own comment, though, that through the journey within, then the energy comes out. So I see it as as a and energy from outside comes in. I hope I'm not getting too spacey here. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, let's just stick to what's in the textbook as best I can. Um, it's inwardly orientated. It's done by yourself. Um, it's done to invoke um, things like higher levels of focus and attention through focusing just on one thing. Um, it's also... Uh, done to invoke feelings of um, emotions uh, like love or compassion uh, and, and uh, it it is um, the word meditation can can be referred to the state um, the emotional mental state of being in meditation and um, it can also uh, um, it can refer to the involvement, um, the actual action, so you can meditate, or you can be in a meditative state. Um, uh, there was a study done, and it's a little old though, uh, I believe it was done in the 1970s, um, saying that 9%, uh, 9.4% 9 9 of Americans uh, have, have uh, involved themselves in meditation in the last year, and uh, I, I think that number's going up. Meditation, mindfulness, um, this is becoming more in vogue lately. As more and more people um, are turning away from drugs, prescription drugs, street drugs, alcohol, um, to, to adjust their own mental and emotional states, but um, the meditative state, the state of um, clear consciousness, the state of no mind, the, the, of inward focus, inward focus and reflection. How, how would, I, I'm, I'm certainly hoping that there's some people in the class here who have ASMR and are also meditators so that they can speak of that. And, and back to ASMR, there are A types and B types, and I believe it is um, type A ASMR, uh, which is the type that I have, actually was brought about by accident through, um, through meditating every day over the course of a couple years, and then added to that, I, I took up a hobby making relaxation videos for uh, YouTube and listening to these triggers over and over in a relaxed state and meditating, I actually gave myself B-type ASMR, which is like what I like to call meditator ASMR. And then there's A-type ASMR that you're born with where it shows up very, very early in your life. Um, I, I'd like to hear from anyone who's a B-type, who's had it all their life, who also meditate. As you can tell, I have a little bit of a, a bias for meditation. Um, so that's it. Uh, I'm going to have to leave soon. 
So if you could please just have your papers in for your regular teacher. Um, I think they are due next Tuesday if if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, not this Tuesday coming, but next Tuesday. Uh, if you could have them in then, um, double spaced, please be writing this down. Um, spelling and grammar, uh, uh, it won't be marked for spelling and grammar, but if it's illegible, uh, I'm sure that's, that's going, to, going to affect something. Uh, about you, Mark. So, if 1,500 words, and here I'm going to write this on the board. 1,500 words. How four states, four altered states. States of consciousness relate, oh, should relate, compare. remember what we're really looking for here is um, basically you or your your um, ASMR buddy uh, how how are is your ASMR like these four altered states of consciousness and how is it not and I do believe that this paper is going to be worth 10% of your grade so it is very important Uh, please have it done, and I'd just like to finish up by thanking you. By thanking you all so much for your time and patience. I know I didn't do uh, the slickest, smoothest job of teaching this class today. Uh, I'm not normally a teacher. Uh, my, my normal occupation is over at YouTube. But uh, thank you for your patience for my clumsy attempts uh, to teach today. And I am, seems that I don't feel qualified to try and hold your ecstatic attention for a full hour on this subject. I will be ending the class early today. Um, thank you again all so much. Uh, for, for listening and being so attentive, and uh, if ever your teacher can't make it again, I certainly hope I will be the one who's invited back. Please have a nice day, and uh, I'm going to let you go now. Bye-bye. Love you all. Good luck on your paper. Thanks again. Have a nice weekend.